Just look at the rock work and some of these massive boulders that are in here. We've got a little fish cave area underneath that flat stone. They also have a little girl and we wanted to make this thing accessible and approachable. So we went ahead and did some very, very informal steps, but you can see these flat slabs of limestone, what we call weathered ledge stone. It really lends itself to this informal staircase kind of look. And then right above that will be the three formal steps going back up and tying into this wall. So that liner is going to come all the way back up against that wall. And we're going to build three courses of steps running along along this part of the liner there. And then back through here, I just love how this is turning out. Again, these big chunks twisting and turning in throughout of here, in and throughout the pond. One thing that I was really happy and pleased with how it has turned out is this area over here. Good morning, everybody. It's Chris at Team Aquascape again, back with Dan and Luis. Corey's on the road dumping our first load of dirt for the morning. Today, as you can see behind me, we have made some serious progress on this pond. We're gonna go ahead and continue to work our way out, having to dig about six, eight feet at a time, roll the liner back, forth, back, forth, and rock our way out of here. So this is our only access area in through here. You can see we've had a little bit of rain overnight, so it's slopped things up a little bit. So we're just having to kind of do some site prep. But we're gonna go ahead and dig out our next little area here, and we're gonna go ahead and continue our rock work down along that bottom shelf using a lot of that granite that we have. There's some over there, there's some back over there, as well as one of those big plastic bins that we brought out as well. So we're gonna go ahead and continue around with the granite. We've got a couple of big signature weathered limestone pieces to set along that back edge, really set that peninsula going into that backwater cove. We may or may not play around with that patio pond sitting over there or a sphere or something of that nature, just to do something a little bit different to spice that area up. So We've got a big rock sitting underneath that liner that's going to get shoved back that way once we fold everything back. But we're going to go ahead and get this bottom section cut, cleaned up, get some fabric in there, fold that liner back another three, four feet, and go ahead and rock in this bottom section. We'll set a couple uh, peninsula stones over here. We're going to maintain this plant pocket right in here. So we'll throw a big boulder up against this brick wall, and that will really set the tone for this plant pocket. And then it's going to arc back around, and we're going to bring that liner in nice and close to that fire pit area. You can see we've got it dug out right there starting it'll go back that way about four and a half five feet and then we'll put another boulder right about there and then that will set the edge of our pond so we're going to finish digging that three foot deep section get that area cleaned up and be able to rock in that bottom so that we can go ahead and continue to move our way out so i think Corey should be back any moment like i said we've got luis dan in the machine and we're going to go ahead and keep cruising right along and try and make this a very productive day this is hump day in our week out here so we've got two days in there is Corey so we're gonna go ahead and start loading up that dirt that Dan is bringing out so we're working, trying to work very efficiently even with the bad weather that we had overnight and making things a miserable mess we're gonna have some fun today eh? let's go So we've got everybody out here today. We are working on cleaning up this shelf. We had to dig it down about another six, eight inches from where it was in order to get that large rock back behind Luis and JD out of there. What we're also doing is while we have the liner pulled back, as I talked about earlier in the video, having to do to rock in a lot of these sections is we're gonna go ahead and start cutting some more stuff out. So this is our peninsula that's going to come out that way. I'm gonna go ahead and over dig some of this. The reason I left that little hump there was just in case, um, it was more for a visual reminder for me to make sure that we brought the shape of the pond out into this area. We're gonna go ahead and cut it back, make room for a rock. I'd rather over dig it now and backfill against that rock later than try and get the rock in, get it all strapped up and put it down and then realize it's gotta go back four inches. So we're gonna go ahead, get that cleaned out. This is all cleaned out and we'll fold this liner and fabric back and we will go ahead and drop that rock in right there, right off of this brick wall. That's gonna hold our liner up. It's going to start our peninsula coming around in this way for that little plant pot. It. The reason we decided to dig it down was because the height of the rock, if we were to have left it on the original shelf height, would have been the same height as that, the top of that coping right there. So I decided to dig it down six, eight inches, and then we can always fill with gravel to adjust our level. I'd rather it be too low than too high when we get it on top of the liner. I can always vault it up because I have other rock down in here. Once we pull that liner back, I'll show you exactly what I mean. But we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up. Then after we do that, fabric, liner, fabric, and then we'll start placing some of these big rocks again. It 
has been just a little bit, actually, maybe not for you out there in YouTube world, but it has been a considerable amount of time where we've made a hell of a lot of progress out here on this incredible, I mean, it almost feels like a recreation pond at this point because it's so enormous. But I've got Jack over here. He is working on the basin area. So Jack, explain to the viewers out there what is happening and the reason why you're doing some of the work that you're doing. Yeah, so right now we're gonna start where, where Chris is at. So the rock that Chris is on right now is our waterfall rock. That's this pretty much dictate our water line throughout the entire pond. And so all that water is gonna come off this rock and into this basin. Now you notice that there's big gravel here and small gravel here. The reason why we went with big gravel. Let me come down here, Jack. The reason why we went big gravel down here, right in front of this spillstone, is because when this water comes off this rock, it's gonna hit this and it's gonna dislodge a lot of this gravel. And so if we're to use a small gravel, it's just gonna push all that gravel out of the way and you're gonna have exposed liner. Because Jack, we have two pumps, right? Yes, we have a four to seven and a five to 9,000 gallon per hour pump. Yep. So we potentially could have 15,000 gallons coming over this single rock at one time, yeah. right? So the reason Jack is bringing that up is because we do have a lot of this three quarter inch gravel down here, but when that water comes off, the velocity and volume of that water will push all of that gravel around, exposing the bare liner, right? Yep. So that's why you chose to go with the bigger gravel. Why did you decide to go with the smaller gravel down and through here? So all through here, we have a small gravel on that just to give us a nice thick layer of water going over the gravel. If we were to go with this bigger stuff, you're not going to have as thick water and it's not going to look as pleasable to the eye as we like to see it. But as you can see right here, I stopped it pretty much to right here. And you can see that I left a, a buffer between the small gravel and the aqua blocks. And that's because we're going to go from pretty much this point right here all the way back pretty much to where the dirt's at sitting right now and that's all going to be a cobble beach with large gravel in it gotcha so the reason you're doing that is because you have the aqua block panels right and this is that collection area for the leaf debris correct yep. so we wanted to stop the small gravel far enough out on top of that bib liner and start with our big gravel and cobble beach area so that that water will not take that little gravel and dump it deposit it down into the aqua blocks right yeah and especially with 15,000 gallons of water possibly coming off this thing this dams up it's gonna dam this entire basin up and it's gonna cause a leak potentially off into the overflow that we're gonna create back behind the pumps right and with that much water coming over it it would not take long to suck this entire reservoir yeah. dry so Jack brings up a really good point about this damming up this is that collection area that we talked about in the last video where all of the overhead debris from the red maple the bald cypress all the stuff that's in the neighboring properties will collect down here or anything that falls onto the top part of the pond will collect in this area this is the area that we need to be able to to maintain and maintain easily. With the little gravel, there's very little interstitial space between the pieces of gravel, whereas with the big gravel, there's the little cracks and crevices and the voids between it, allowing water to get back down into the pumps more freely than if it would if all of this were little gravel. This stuff clogs very, very quick, so that's why we're going with cobble and larger gravel over this to help the customer maintain this water feature. Yeah. And, then, and avoid a leak. Yeah, so as we continue on, so right here you can see that we have our pumps are housed. We have two pilot vaults. So right now, obviously they're exposed and we're gonna come through here and we're going to take cobbles and large gravel and we're going to cobble beach like we call it all this and then right here back here this is where our overflow is going to go so we're going to set water line two inches above aqua blocks and that's going to dictate that water line so when there's big rainstorms we're going to tap off the roof system and all that water is going to come into the pond when this basin exceeds 3,000 gallons it's going to come overflow and then it's going to be able to easily get out okay Good. So you're gonna button this up. This is gonna look incredible. You won't even know where the pump faults and everything are, where the liner stops and where the land begins. You can see we've got our three inch line running out back that way. And then our two inch line from the four to seven snakes back around this way and goes all the way back around and goes up on the right side of those steps and then goes up to that sphere. And there is a spillway up there as well. So this is that spill stone that Jack was just talking about where all the water is going to overflow. That's about a three and a half foot wide spill stone. We also have a little secret falls right there that will pull off a little gravity feed. Jack is doing a fantastic job buttoning this up. You can see we've got everything graveled in through here. We still have to dam up this portion of the stream right in here. I want to drive water level up so that we can get the bottom of those rocks underwater back over there. So this little waterfall in here is actually very important to set at the appropriate height. I think what Jack's going to do or Corey is going to just do a cobble landslide and foam in between all of those cobbles and just kind of have this babbly brook rapid whitewater 
look to it, which will give it a really neat effect, but it will also do is it will also push that stuff further out this way as opposed to immediately making this turn and going over the negative edge. So I wanna get that push of water. So we're gonna crank up the velocity by doing a bouldery style waterfalls where the water is crashing and turning over onto itself, creating white water as well as pushing that stuff this way. Other really, really neat thing that we've been doing is incorporating some more of these whimsical GFRC products. You can see we've got a patio pond stuck in right there that we have a two inch line ran into it. We're gonna go ahead and put a light inside. There's also another one watt light down below it that'll light it up at night that looks incredible. But just look at the rock work and some of these massive boulders that are in here. We've got a little fish cave area underneath that flat stone. They also have a little girl and we wanted to make this thing accessible and approachable. So we went ahead and did some very, very informal steps, but you can see these flat slabs of limestone, what we call weathered ledge stone. It really lends itself to this informal staircase kind of look. And then right above that will be the three formal steps going back up and tying into this wall. So that line is gonna come all the way back up against that wall. And we're gonna build three courses of steps running along this part of the liner there. And then back through here, I just love how this is turning out. Again, these big chunks twisting and turning in throughout of here, in and throughout the pond. One thing that I was really happy and pleased with how it has turned out is this area over here. I'm inside the pond, but I'm standing right in front of that sunken fire pit. But we wanted to carry through that stack slate sphere look over to this side of the pond as opposed to it only having the one at the headwaters of that stream. So we brought out the three different sizes and we went ahead and tucked in the medium and the small up there. They're at a little bit of a different height. It looks like this one is almost the same height as that. The small is actually about an inch and a half higher. I may raise it just a little bit and nestle it in a little bit closer to that medium one just to give a little bit more height difference so it doesn't look so close in height. But I love how this area is turning out. Now what we're gonna do here is just basically finish out this pond. We're gonna get another rock tucked in right here up against the brick wall. And then I've got some cedar siding that we are, it's tongue and groove and we are going to cut two foot pieces and that is going to line the inside of the pond. There you go. That's gonna line the inside of the pond on this concave part of the fire pit. So that'll come all the way underneath here and those are thin enough to actually fit underneath the coping stone really, really well. We're gonna put another big boulder here to kind of anchor everything out. Waterfalls and part of the stream will come in over here to start this side of the pond. So we still need a couple more boulders in through here, but we are rolling right along. This will all be a gravel beach area back over and through here. You can tell we have plenty of liner to go ahead and get that thing done. I know that was kind of a long, a narrative segment there, but I just wanted to kind of share some of that stuff with you.